An example of the conservation of mechanical energy can be seen here with two separate objects. Both of them are released from a height of 10 meters above the ground. And one object is allowed to fall vertically downwards. So it will fall that 10 meters to the ground. The other object is on an incline at 30 degrees and will therefore roll down that incline and ultimately have traveled 10 meters downward, but have, having traveled far further on the incline. And we are asked here that in the event that friction is equal to zero, so this is in an isolated system or in an ideal world where friction is equal to zero, can we calculate the velocity of each of these objects when they reach the bottom? And so we can do this using the conservation of mechanical energy. We know that the conservation of mechanical energy tells us that the change in mechanical energy is equal to zero. This can be written as the final mechanical energy minus the initial mechanical energy is equal to zero, or that can be then rewritten as the initial mechanical energy is simply equal to the final mechanical energy, where we know that mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy for an object. So I'm going to start for object A by calculating our mechanical energy initially, which is equal to our initial potential energy plus our initial kinetic energy, where potential energy is the product of mass, gravity, and height above the surface of the Earth. And kinetic energy is one half times the object's mass times the velocity squared. And initially, this object has a mass of five kilograms, gravitational acceleration of 9.8, a height of 10 meters above the surface of the Earth. And because the velocity is zero, the kinetic energy initially is zero. So initially, this object has 490 joules of mechanical energy. We can see that the same is true for object B, because object B is also at rest. It is also at a point 10 meters above the ground, and therefore its initial mechanical energy is also 490 joules. Now, what we find here is that for our object A, because the mechanical energy does not change, we can say, therefore, that our initial mechanical energy must be equal to the final mechanical energy when this object strikes the ground. And we can say, therefore, that 490 joules must be equal to mass times gravity times height plus one half mass times velocity squared, where now the height above the ground is zero, so its potential energy is zero, and the mass is now or is still five but the velocity is now something different where we can solve to find that our velocity for object a is 14 meters per second this is obviously just before this object strikes the ground now this makes sense we could also use an equation of motion and calculate because we know that there's only one force acting on this object so therefore f net is equal to m times a where f net is equal to fg and therefore we can calculate the acceleration of this object just to find that it is g at 9.8 meters per second per second whereas for this object that's slightly more complicated because although there is a force of gravity pulling this object downward that force of gravity will be resolved into two components those being fg perpendicular and fg parallel where fg parallel can be calculated as the parallel component of the gravitational force acting on this object, which is Fg sine of theta, and Fg again five times 9.849 times sine of 30. This angle over here will be the same as this angle here, and therefore the force of gravity, the parallel component of gravity is only 24 0.5 newtons but that is down the slope so we can see that the net force acting on object b is far smaller than that acting on object a but then we can also hopefully see that the distance that object b is going to travel its displacement is going to be far greater than that of object a which means that the acceleration is going to act for a longer period of time either way what we find 
is that for both of these objects in a system where there is no friction, so in an isolated system, because there is no energy being lost, the mechanical energy at the start is equal to the mechanical energy at the end, which tells us that for object B, when it does finally reach the ground and ha having traveled 10 meters downward, its final velocity will also be 14 meters per second. This again is a result of the conservation of mechanical energy, which says that in an isolated system, an isolated system being one where there are no external forces or the net external force is zero in an isolated system, the mechanical energy is conserved, which means that our mechanical energy at the top must be equal to the mechanical energy at the bottom. And this is summarized in the formula that we started with, delta E mech equals zero, the change in mechanical energy is zero, as long as it is an isolated system and there are no forces like friction acting on this object.